Hi, yes, hello. So uh, I'm David uh, Eifold, nearly. No, it's a very strange surname. No one ever gets it right first time. Um, but uh, I'm absolutely delighted to be able to come and talk to you about the work that we've been doing uh, on climate proofing and SUDS. Um, it's a really special day for Sustrain. We're very happy to be here and be doing this. Um, I thought I might give you a quick overview of uh, groundwork uh, and what we do. So this is um, the main areas of work that groundwork uh, have. Um, you can see them there. Um, we, uh, we're a charitable uh, organisation. Um, we're an environmental and social charity. Um, we have a main vision to create more sustainable communities that are vibrant um, and healthy uh, and where they respect both um, the local and global environment. There's a nice kind of holistic picture um, to what we do. Um, and I thought it would also be important just to, just to run through some of the, um, the support that we've had through the different project backers, different supporters, because, um, because without them, frankly, not, not very much happens. Um, so uh, Life Plus is a, is a, European, um, uh, a European fund which has underpinned an awful lot of the work that we've done in this area. Um, they uh, asked us to look at how we might retrofit uh, cost-effective, kind of lightly engineered sub solutions um, all the way across housing estates. Um, in, in West London to, uh, to ease the environmental impact of climate change. Um, Thames Water, we've also been very fortunate to work with and working with currently on the 20 for 20 um, scheme. So they're looking at removing uh, 20 hectares of impermeable surface from, um, from the combined sewer network for £20 million pounds, um, by 2020. Lots of 20s in there. Um, and we're also very happy to have been working with um, the London Borough of Hammersmith and Fulham as well, who we can't say enough good things about, really. They've been a great client and partner of us for a long time. Um, they're a great supporter of SUDS. They've done an awful lot to push that. They've worked with us a lot. I know they've worked with other people in the room a lot as well, and they've been really supportive, so it's great to work with them. Um, and a really good project team. Um, so this scheme has been going on for a number of years now, um, and... Um, yeah, a lot of different people have been involved um, with lots of different expertise, so we've, we've relied on a really a good group of people to be able to work with. Um, yeah, so sort of chapter one of climate change resilience, really. Um, I thought I'd drop this in just to, just to make the wider point of um, sustainable urban drainage and green infrastructure and how important it was as a kind of multifunctional um, approach to help us meet all of those problems that climate change poses to us as a society. Um, it's, uh, there's no such thing as a magic bullet, um, but we think that, that SUDS and the green infrastructure do an awful lot to help meet um, a lot of those challenges. Um, they can be very effective, they can be very cost effective, um, something else that we found. And there's also a great deal of multi-beneficial benefits to those as well, above just changing kind of the physical problems that you see. So there's lots of benefits to people's health, to well-being. Um, biodiversity um, and the environmental impact, um, environmental improvements that we can have, um, particularly at a local scale. So they can often be a great tool for kind of communicating that back to local residents and helping them understand um, kind of the impact that they can have as a community on their, on their environment. Um, yeah, so the project covers three, three main areas out in Hammersmith and Fulham. Uh, this is Hammersmith Bridge out on the left-hand side there. Uh, so Queen Caroline Estate, Cheeseman's Terrace, and it's a bit of a mouthful. We call it CER. So it's um, Cyril Thatcher, Eric MacDonald, and, and Richard Knight House. They're all part of the same kind of subcatchment. They relate back to the same um, pumping station um, over there, over in Hammersmith, which is a Category 1 pumping station. It has to work very hard um, when there are flood events um, to keep on top of things. And, uh, yeah, this is just a, an example of... Well, a very typical kind of housing estate, really. So this is, this is what we were looking at in terms of what we're trying to change. Um, so it's not a terribly inspiring environment, um, lots of concrete, um, some vegetation, but perhaps looking a little bit sad and a bit stressed. Um, but what we see is, and I'm sure lots of you will see as well as designers, is that there's an awful lot of opportunity there to start to integrate some of the solutions that I'll talk about and I'm sure lots of other people talk about as well. Um, Another example over at, um, where's this? This is over at Eric MacDonald. So this is a green space. Um, again, very typical amenity green space on a housing estate. It's not the most exciting photo in the world. That's kind of the point. Um, but you can see that it's not doing a great deal. And what I think is interesting about this is that this is right next to people's homes. 
Um, this is the equivalent of there, for those of us that are lucky enough to have back gardens and front gardens, this is people's garden. Um, this is where their kids get kicked out after school. This is where they go and meet their friends. This is where they socialize. Um, and we think that there's enormous opportunity there to, to do um, more interesting things with the, with the landscape um, and to create a better space for them to live in. Um, so I guess the question is, how do we encourage people to do that? And how do we make that project work? And um, well, the simple answer is we go and ask them uh, <laughs> um, as a kickoff. So uh, we obviously did a lot of feasibility work and site assessment work to underpin the whole project. Um, this is just an example of a, of a community mapping exercise that we did over on Cheeseman's Terrace. So we asked people to take little color coded stickies um, and related that back to our main objects, so kind of thermal benefits and performance, um, flood problems, uh, flooding problems, and also where um, there are potentially opportunities for the green space to be improved. So how do people use their space now? Um, where do they think there might be more opportunity for those to be improved to give them things to do that they can see as being part of their community in the future? Um, and take that information um, and start to continue that narrative and that build on that picture um, and present back to them the sort of opportunities that they might be able to engage with and support. So um, we were talking about uh, different types of device, so green roofs, um, swales, detention basins, all of those kind of soft sud solutions, um, rainwater gardens, um, tree, tree planting, how you might be able to use tree planting to, to improve their local environment and to absorb um, rainwater. Um, but one thing that came up very strongly was also this idea of um, community uh, food growing areas as well. Um, people were really keen um, on this idea of gardening and having a sense of ownership over where they lived. So that was something else we really tried to integrate into that and use it as part of the whole narrative for the project. Um, a few examples of what we did. Um, so as I say, this is across lots of different sites and what's kind of interesting about the project is there are I don't know, maybe, maybe 100 different devices all over the place on these different estates. So this is just a, a selection of the different ways that we try to address some of those problems that we found. So the top left there again is, is Sun Road. So that was that first picture that we showed you. Um, that's been converted to a rainwater garden um, adjacent to the road. So they're picking up, um, that's picking up all of the carriageway runoff within that catchment area. It's being diverted through a gully and underpiped back into those rainwater gardens. It's being slowly released with a perforated pipe right the way back through that whole system. So you can see the rainwater gardens next to some permeable paving, rainwater garden, permeable paving, rainwater garden, permeable paving. That's all one big attenuation device. So underneath that, there's a kind of mix of um, crushed rock and substrate engineered soils underneath there. Um, the whole thing's under drained. Um, it's also picking up the footpath and it's also picking up one of the um, downpipes from the adjacent balconies as well on the property. The bottom left there, again, is another angle, but the same place of one of those green spaces. Um, more multifunctional environment, so we've got a swale that's been built into that. Um, again, you can just see on the, the, the bottom of the photo there uh, is a drainage channel, which is taking the water from the downpipe straight into the swale. Um, the water is also being directed from the footpaths and running off into the swale, and what's not being picked up through interception on the grass is coming down into that space as well, so it's picking up the whole area. Um, and you can see some of the... Um, uh, growing areas there as well. Um, again, making the most of small opportunities to catch water. There's lots of very small isolated devices. So there's an um, example of a, a permeable tree pit, um, again linked as part of the same system to an adjacent rainwater garden. It all sits on top of a combined engineered soil and substrate. Um, and on the bottom right there is a, is a gravel garden, which is just an example of a small piece of public realm improvement but picked up on a, on a desire line that we picked up through consultation with a brand new bridge that helped people get across the site. Um, and kids love this, so they, they kind of they play on the bridge, they play under the bridge, they you know, hide like trolls and all the rest of it, and play in the gravel at the bottom. It's really popular. Um, and we have some results. Um, so we've been working with the University of East London, the Sustainability Research Institute, who've done a fantastic job of monitoring the life out of this uh, for the last two years. There have been all sorts of different um, methods with photos and pressure sensors, cameras, um, to pick up on the attenuation performance, the thermal benefits uh, and the biodiversity of the different systems. Um, and this is one year's worth of results. Um, so I won't go through all of them because 
we've got other things to talk about. Um, but some notable ones are that 1.2 million um, cubic metres of rainfall are being diverted every year from that estate. So it's a huge amount of water that's coming off. 57 species of wildflower on the, on the roofs um, have been monitored. We've got honeybees back, which is fantastic. So honeybees, solitary bees, bumblebees have all been monitored coming back and using the site. Um, basins are designed to a really strong, resilient capacity, so one in 100, um, and uh, plus 40% for climate change. Um, and also lots of softer benefits as well that we've managed to work through with the community. So a strong part of what we do is to try to help local communities take a bit more ownership of changing their environment, as I was saying. So we've been cha training sustainability champions, um, 470 residents involved in the consultation process, people put back into employment to working with our green team, sort of trained up in NVQ, City and Guild qualifications in horticulture. Um, so lots of very good news stories from that. Um, for 20 for 20, um, they are targeting performance against greenfield rates at 1 in 30. So we've been able to demonstrate that across the catchment that we're working on, um, the devices that we're using, we're, we're, um, we're achieving betterment, um, uh, both volumetric and in terms of the peak flows um, across that. So that's been fantastic, a really strong story for Suds and Thames Water. Um, and very quickly, sort of, where does this go next? So the whole, the whole point of this project was that it's replicable. Um, and an awful lot of this isn't new. You know, it's, it's been around for a long time, and lots of people have been doing this kind of thing on estates for a while. Um, but it's incredibly easily replicated. Um, and what we're hoping for is to see lots more housing estates, with our partners and other people's partners, developing similar types of projects. So this is over at White City. You can just see, sorry, White City, also in Hammersmith and Fulham. Um, some examples left to right of um, the type of device that we might have used over at Queen Caroline or Cheeseman's Terrace and a similar area on the right hand side. How easy is it to move that to that? It's a very, very simple design replication and just a small example of a concept proposal um, that we put together for community engagement. That's us. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. <laughs>